If you are between the ages of 80 and 102, despite what your grandchildren or great-grandchildren might think, you most likely still have sexual fantasies. Most people in that age group still do. Most people in that age group still engage in one form of sex or another. Everyone agrees that sex is a very important part of human existence. It helps self-esteem. Intimacy is very important between people. Human touch is very important. And actually, sex helps you in terms of health. For elder gentlemen, the ideal diagnosis when they see a doctor is eat more dark chocolate, drink more red wine, and have more sex. Now, if you're losing interest in sex, the first place to go is to see your doctor. Often this, this, this loss, lack of interest is caused by a physical problem that can be reversed. Second, it could be a problem of communication, communicating with your spouse. Unfortunately, when we get to the, to the age of 80 or 102, we don't look as good as we did when we were teenagers, even if we didn't look that good as teenagers. So sometimes people are embarrassed about how they look, and that will get in the way of sex. Sometimes some of the positions or the techniques that were, were, were great when you were 30 or 40 are now painful for your partner. So communication is a very, very important thing. And I could tell you about different techniques, but frankly, I'm just too embarrassed to do that. But there is a lot, there are many, many books about senior sex, many places on the web. One place that I would recommend is go to a place called about.com. Search senior living and a subcategory senior sex. And there are many, many articles on senior sex there. What if you don't have a partner? Uh, I re recall the cartoon that shows the, the elderly woman talking to her elderly husband and she's saying, if I die first, you get remarried. And if you die first, I'll get a cat. Well, maybe she won't. Obviously, you, uh, many seniors start dating after their spouse dies. And you can you know, meet people of the opposite sex or even of the same sex for that matter uh, in adult uh, care centers, uh, uh, churches, and things like that. There are now, of course, people looking online. There are a lot of dating services. And indeed, there are dating services online for seniors. Very briefly, I mean, that can be, you know, you can find someone there. However, a couple of safety tips, you know, people, you know, there can be some, you know, stalkers out there. So number one is never give anybody your telephone number or your home address. Second of all, if you're going to meet someone, meet them in a public place like a restaurant or a Walmart. Third of all, tell a friend of yours where you're going to go and what you're going to be up to. And fourth of all, and this is an interesting little ploy, is have a friend phone you about half an hour or an hour into the date. And if it's going well, you just ignore the call. But if it's going badly, you can say, oh, you know, I've got an emergency. I've got to get back to get out of the date. Nursing homes, there's sex in nursing homes. Some nursing homes have policies kind of di discouraging that. Others kind of turn their backs. Others will notify relatives if that's going on. When you're shopping around for a nursing home, if you are, you might want to discuss that problem with the people in charge. Obviously, uh, there's an issue of safe sex. And if you're having sex with people that you haven't been living your whole life with, you want to make sure it's the same advice you might give to a teenager. Make sure you know who your partner is and take precautions, prophylactics and things of that elk. If you do pick up a, a sexually transmitted disease, get medical attention. In the segment I talk about when you talk to your doctor, I, I tell a story that Shelley Berman used to talk about, that when he got on a plane, he always wanted to ask, what should I do if it crashes? But he never would, because he would rather be dead than look foolish. Talk to your doctor if you think you might have a sexually transmitted disease. Be look foolish rather than be dead. Now, what about the law? 
The law is that adults can do what they want to with their bodies. They are free to do that. And fairly recently, the United States Supreme Court struck down a law against homosexual gay sex and said that is unconstitutional and people have a right to do what they want to in the bedroom. Now, you've got to have consenting adults. Who can't consent? Obviously, any somebody under age can't consent. But somebody that is drugged, somebody that is drunk, somebody that is demented cannot legally consent. Having sex with such a person is a crime, rape or sexual assault. Okay, so be leery of that. In the context of nursing homes, if that is going on, nursing homes have a, a duty to protect the people that are living there from sexual assault. And if your relative is a victim of sexual assault, in a nursing home, not only does the person who has done it committed a crime, you might be able to sue the nursing home saying that they failed in their duty to protect your relative. Sexual abuse by caretakers is another thing one has to be uh, worried about. I have another segment in this series on elder abuse, and I talk there about how you can get uh, a senior to talk, talk, start talking to you if they are the victims of abuse. Finally, if you're like me and you're on the internet a lot, you will get ads uh, on all kinds of products, including for the treatment for penis enlargement treatments. And I just want to let the people that send those ads out know that my generation is not the proper generation to target those ads for because we've made our piece decades ago.